so this is Calico. She is the horse that unfortunately fell through the trailer. I'm counting to uh, 10,000 because that's how many horses have been shipped out to slaughter in Mexico. It is. It's like a skin tag. I've never seen. Look at that. I see her. We just had a cat dropped off. We got some sort of infection going on. Both eyes. Oh, that doesn't look good at all. Well, Doc is going to be working on Halo again. So she has a hole all the way from her mouth to the outside. What, what are you guys doing? They just made me choke on my Dr. Pepper. So. What, why, why did you make her? Uh, I'm making her choke on her Dr. Pepper by telling her stories. What kind of stories, Keith? <laughs> uh, the, the people outside, they, uh, they uh, went around and told us their names, and I looked at them and said, I'll never remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and then she started choking because <laughs> she was trying to laugh. <laughs> hey, Kimberly, what you doing? I am working on our new adoption, like everything platform. It's a sheltering platform, and I'm just trying to figure some things out in it. We are going to start by taking her heart rate to see how well her pain is managed on the medications that she's on. Normally, we would move them out of a stall for a bandage change, but it's pretty uncomfortable for her to walk at all. So. We're gonna um, probably muck this stall really quickly and then do her bandage change in place so she doesn't have to walk very far. I'm about to give her some of the opiate pain medication for her bandage change, so that heart rate should come down. So this is Calico. She is the horse that unfortunately fell through the trailer. <laughs> and Dr. Lydia is about to try and rewrap her leg and see what her prognosis is. Since she's being so good today. I'm going to try not sedating her. I'm just giving her um, some butorphanol, which is an opiate type pain medication. It's going to make her just a little bit sleepy, but not super zonked. And if we need to give her some more, we can. I'm actually pleasantly surprised. So la last week we had about three inches of exposed joint space. Today we have about one inch of exposed joint space. And you guys see how her body is actively working to close that. I don't love how warm and swollen it is. We're gonna give her some more IV antibiotics today. This one hurt the most last week as well. Okay. So she's responsive because anytime you have a wound that something sticks to, it can be painful. So we're gonna get it wet with some sterile water. So if you wanna just draw that up for me, that would be perfect. We still have open joint space and we have indications of some devitalized tissue. Right there you can see the color change between the front leg. We've got nice healthy pink back leg. We've got some not as healthy looking tissue. Thankfully she doesn't have a fever so she's not gone septic. I'm not surprised that we have some evidence of localized bacterial contamination because she was touching a road and in a trailer. Um, so I'm not as happy with the back leg and she's pretty reactive to it. I do think we're gonna have to sedate her a little bit to get that one taken care of. Um, what is essential for this mare's survival is that she doesn't have bacterial joint infection that spreads to her bloodstream. So with an open joint, her body is constantly dumping new joint fluid into the area and that's why these bandages are so soaking wet. Her body is actively making tissue to close those joints and she doesn't have a systemic infection, so we're gonna keep fighting with her, but if we have one fly land on that open joint, it is game over. So we are doing our best to get these as surgically clean as possible and keep them continuously covered. Um, without a truly clean and sterile bandage, we don't have a chance. giving 
an intravenous antibiotic. Um, her vein doesn't love it today. This is enrofloxacin. It's the same antibiotic she's getting orally, but it's more effective if we give it in the vein. I am not going to ask your team to give her IV injections, but if we can give it even once a week, it's gonna help. Great, so our heart rate is 52, down from 60. So unfortunately, often where we are clinically with catastrophic accidents are you have to make a choice because you have a period of time of a lot of pain and discomfort as the animal is healing and you have to choose whether or not you want to put that animal through it. So if I had a 26 year old horse and I knew they would be painful for three or four months with a pretty grave prognosis, I probably wouldn't ask them to do this with a three year old. Not only are her body's immune functions like top notch, but she has hopefully decades left. So it was worth it to really push for trying. Uh, we're taking out sutures out of a uh, kitten's spay wound. It was infected last week, but it looks like it's healed up so far. And so we're just trying to get the sutures out. She is fine. I'll cut this cone. Hooray! Hi, everybody. They can be discontinued. That was five to seven days, so we're good. Would you hate me if I asked you to grab those gross bandaging no. materials? If you don't want to, I'm happy to swap I, I shots with you. I am happy to. I touch lots of nasty things on a daily basis, so. I also have horses. This is chlorhexidine scrub. Halo's face wound is very contaminated. So we are going to get it as clean as we possibly can before we put the bone graft putty and the dental putty in there. Well, Doc is going to be working on Halo again. Um, she had a probably like a tooth abscess or something that blew out the top of her face. So she has a hole all the way from her mouth to the outside. Jenna and Casey are out today. So me and Sailor are doing the best we can to fill in. Sailor, your other job is going to be to keep time. We have a total of 30 minutes, start to finish. So start time is when I give the second injection, which is ketamine. You're all right, we're just gonna do some alcohol, hi. Right. That was not the worst thing that's gonna happen to you today. So Sailor, mm -hmm. if you'll just keep us posted on our time, that would be great. Starting right now, you have 27 minutes. Okay, perfect. Incidentally, the speculum is a lot easier to put in place when the horse is under general anesthesia. So what we are looking for is communication. So last time, by the time we got to the full extent of this, the hole in the mouth flushed evenly out the hole in the face. And you can see, there we go. That's what we're looking for. Sweet. I can palpate it on this side. So our hole is free. Beautiful. Oh my goodness, this is so pretty. Can you guys see? You guys, this is so exciting. I'm actually really, really happy. That hole is way smaller than it was last Monday. So even just cleaning it out one time, and even with all the stuff packing it back up, she's really trying hard to heal that. So how long does that stay in there? Uh, it should stay for two to three months. Oh wow. Which would be enough for us to close this hole. This is what I do in elephant medicine every second. I'm really glad we got that putty though. If this is the only stuff we had, I would not feel great about. Hole is plugged. Now we pray that it stays there. Can I steal your light back? Um, I need 
the bandaging material. So that sigh means we're getting light. I need the bandaging materials. Okay. Look at you guys. We're like a well-oiled team. And put put my hand underneath right here. Yeah. Do you want more vet wrap? I am probably gonna. I think I got what I need right here. Okay. I think I'm good. Really, like if this stays on even until tomorrow, I'll be happy. We're not gonna rewrap this. We want it to drain. Okay, stocking it under my arm. This is gonna be fun. I have no idea how this is gonna work. I'm gonna get out of your way and just let you try to do that because I'm not strong enough. <laughs> yes, <laughs> feel good about this. Are you ready to go start your life of crime? Are you okay that I'm doing this? I can get out of the oh, way yeah, at any no. moment. We're good. So we're not gonna win any awards in the uh, aesthetics of bandaging, but <laughs> functionality wise. <laughs> you guys. Right, great job, everybody. We were able to get the area fully cleaned. We had a lot of ingesta and food mixture packed back in the hole, but compared to last week, Last week we had about a tennis ball sized hole and this week we're at like, could be a, like a plum sized hole. So a lot of reduction, her body is actively closing in the hole with the healthy tissue that we wanna be there. So she doesn't have a temperature, her breath smelled better, her body is fighting the infection off. What we need to hope and pray for now, we plugged the diastema, which is the hole in her tooth with a custom a uh, bone graft material, and then a dental cement material. Uh, unfortunately, I wish I'd had more volume. So our hole the plug is about this big, and we got it about that much filled. If that plug holds even for three weeks, and her body is able to fill that hole in from the inside, then we're in great shape, and she should have a very normal life, just missing that tooth. If the plug doesn't hold, we'll know quickly because we'll have food coming back out that spot in her face. And unfortunately, this is our only option as far as surgery is doing this. So let's hope that whole stays closed. <laughs> One of our goals for today is to drink lots and lots of water. Really? Stay hydrated. Okay. okay? And um, a lot of Several people are gone uh, for training this week. That all slipped my mind when I came into work this morning. So I may or may not have been running around this morning like a chicken with my head cut off a little bit. So exciting new update. We have some more stickers on the website. Ooh. These are some examples here. We've also got, check that out. Um, this one is my favorite. So anyways, if y'all, want some stickers you can go to our website at horseplushumanesociety.org and click on the shop tab and all the stickers are going to be right there along with some fun t-shirts and some other goodies so definitely go check it out okay so what you doing right now i am editing versus shelter heroes oh it is going good <laughs> yeah okay i think so good macy how are you doing i'm doing good I'm working on some reels right now for facebook and um, some photos uh, for Instagram. Uh, I'm counting to uh, approximately 10,000 because that's how many horses have been shipped out to slaughter in Mexico. And you're doing it what, live? Yeah, live on TikTok wow. and some other platforms. Facebook and uh, YouTube, I think. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. If Justin wants to raise awareness about horse slaughter in this way, I think it might raise a lot of awareness. So um, because of that, I'm, I'm for it. And yeah. I just pity him for having to count that much, but he wants to do it. And I hope it uh, wakes up a lot of people to how many horses are being shipped to slaughter. 501, 502, 503, 504, 505, 506, 507, 508, 2228, 0, 2228, 2233, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,
I'm a little warm, but other than that, it's not too bad. Uh, we're putting the ceiling on. Wow. So, on the vet barn, I got the uh, electrics all done. We'll call the uh, insulator guys and they'll come out and spray foam everything. Once that's done, we'll start finishing up side, the plywood and siding. If everything goes, keeps on schedule. So. Yeah. Depends on the, how busy the spray guy, foam guy is. Everybody's busy this time of the year. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I took the wrong job. I think you did. They could be riding around on a golf cart or something like that in the cool breeze. Now I'm up here sweating. Today's my first day, okay. and we're gonna see how I work today, and oh. hopefully I don't get fired today. Okay, okay. I think he's talking about somebody else. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I have someone I'm training today. Oh, there we go. Hello. Hi. Rebecca, she is on a, a one month trial period at front desk and helping me uh, do a lot of the fundraising stuff. Uh, Shelby um, used to help me with all that stuff, but she's married and living her life now so not here not living it here but anyways we're very happy for her uh so now we're going and to i'm not married so i'm here <laughs> oh, you have said that. there are a lot of people come here and they get married and they yeah don't say that no that's not I'm... <laughs> okay anyways i know uh owen's got to go check on the new guy so mm -hmm. yeah and the new guy's name's david i already got him put to work so i figured to put David to work this morning and weed eating since it's a little cool before it gets hot. Francis is our longest resident here so far besides the uh, one horse that Tony and Jason brought from California. She has been here since August of last year. So she really needs a home. She is a sweet meal. She still needs to, to learn a few things. Um, needs a lot of desensitizing. She's getting a lot better about letting you put the halter on her out in the pen or the pasture. So she just needs a little bit more time. Francis is about 11 years old and mules can live until they're about 45 or 50 years old. So if you guys come and adopt her, you still have another 35 to 40 years with her. does lead very well. She'll stay with you pretty good. She just needs a lot of work really on picking up her feet. And a little bit more um, work on kind of just manners, respecting your space. And she's good to go. I would, I'd had the saddle on her, and I held onto the horn and swung up and swung the corner. But then I tried it bareback without the saddle, and that's when she did buck. But we can back up on a pro. My name is Tanner and I have officially been here one year this week and I am HR for Horse Plus Humane Society. So when I first started, there was nine employees and since then we now have 25 full-time employees and three um, part-time employees. The hiring positions that we have available, I will post those online. We will also go over each person's position, go over their job details, training, and make sure to enter them into the hiring process with payroll, all of that. I do answer emails, so if you email info at horsehumane.org with a question, 
um, I get to respond to you. I also get to look at Facebook, update some of our comments, some of our postings. I do photos of the day, which is one of my favorite things. I just wanna make sure that everybody enjoys what they're doing. Also as HR, if there's any um, complaints, any worries, anything they think we can do better, I encourage them to come to me, speak to me, and we can see what we can do. So the reason I accepted a position from Horse Plus when they offered it was because a lot of my positions, I've been working in bigger corporations. Um, at one time I had over 400 employees. So it's nice to be able to bring it down, uh, be here, have the relationships, and also at the end of the day, what um, enticed my decision was what we do. I believe so much in the mission. I believe in the people. I believe in giving the horses a voice and I love the happy endings. Yeah. Oh, and I, they're so, listen, they never ever put their teeth, they only put their little lips. <laughs>
Peyton's taking Curly. <laughs> oh. oh. I'm taking Curly. Okay. You have no goats, right? We have goats, but the home that he's actually going to doesn't have goats. Ah, oh, perfect. So we'll just keep him separated That's until it. he gets to go to his home. Perfect. There you go. Girl, perfect. Go it's all fixed. Well, now you can actually be up here. Okay. <laughs> there we go. The tape won't stay. Hey, don't fall. There we go. We tried. There. Peyton has decided to take Mama Octavia and baby Spock, even though Spock is not paying attention right now. He's over there. He's checking the grass out, okay? We're going to load him up, though. Well, we're excited to bring him onto the farm and let them finish their rehabilitation and then eventually get adopted. All right, let's load up. Ma'am, oh, here we go. Come on, let's go. Okay, Peyton from Christian Farms Rescue and Rehab. Um, it's a shelter that we work with very closely. We just did a shelter transfer of 12 animals and we're really excited because we know that Peyton is gonna find them excellent homes. It is raining really hard. The lightning is literally hitting right outside the door. So come check out the storm. This is what we mean by Tennessee rain. There's a tornado in the area. I don't think so. Hope and it's not. gonna be very short lived, so we just need to survive a little bit. But it is crazy out there. We've actually had very little rain for a very long time. And then this week it's actually just started raining consistently every day. But this is the worst storm we've had in a while. Um, usually the the sawdust tarp stays put and you don't see the wind just whipping off the roof and rain and we need the rain. I'm glad it's almost gone. There's lightning everywhere. It was flash and boom and um, we're gonna have to make sure all the animals are okay. After this, the storm came on so quickly, um, it really had no warning. That was crazy. <laughs> I guess that's where, uh, where Keith was stuck during the storm. I think everybody else made it to the office, but Keith, Keith was stuck over there. So we're gonna go check on all the horses. We just had a pretty uh, smooth thunderstorm pass by. Um, we're gonna make sure that they're all still up and nobody was injured during that storm. So Christian Farms Rescue and Rehab is coming to pick up a few animals for a shelter transfer. Alright, so Curly is going to be transferred to Christian Farms Rescue and Rehab. So this morning we came across this little kitty in the middle of the road and um, 
saw a car drive right over it, not hitting him, but over it. So I instinctively scooped him up. And, um, and as I started making phone calls to look for a place to bring him, because we have two dogs of our own that I don't think would be, I, well, I've never been around a cat anyway. And again, my husband, he's not an animal person. So he, you can tell that he looks, or he or she looks sick. His eyes are, I don't know if his eyes want to be open, but he can't because he's sick. So I didn't want to just leave him after I saw him. I went all the way to Lawrenceburg um, in hopes to find um, somebody who could take him. Nobody was accepting any cats. So um, I then went to Columbia to the Murray County um, Animal Shelter there. And because I found her in, um, in Lawrence, I mean, I'm sorry, in um, Lewis County, they wouldn't take them take him so um thankfully they gave me some phone numbers and i came across a woman who told me about this place i was so thankful um i was willing to you know take her in and take care of her until i could find her a place but again i was so thankful to find this place and thank you guys we just had a cat dropped off and poor thing as you can see it's definitely got some sort of infection going on both eyes um, it's kind of wheezing, so probably a little bit of upper respiratory, um, and it is a sad little sight. It was found on the side of the road, um, and so it was surrendered to us. Um, at this time, our medical team is actually off in classes, so we, um, we decided that we're going to take it to the vet um, ourselves. So we're going to do an emergency vet appointment, and we're going to go and see what the vet has to say and see what they say about Miss Callie. She was named Callie since she is a calico. So prayers for Miss Callie. An adopter just pulled in, so let's go get him checked in. We're going to grab out Honey first. She's a uh, about 17-year-old walker. Um, She's got a good amount of go, typical walker. Yeah, pretty forward. <laughs> we'll, we'll bring her into the round pen for you to see. She's sweet, super easy to catch, perfect for picking up her feet and everything. A lot of walkers are pushy, but she did good for me leading her down the alleyway. Okay. She wasn't too bad. She moves when I asked her, ask her to. I think she has some hypersensitivity to fly bites because she's got a bunch of little bumps. Oh, no, she her. does, yeah. Um, so we have we have ridden her, we double padded her just because she is still a bit thin. This is my first walker I've ever had and I was like, oh, that's the best thing ever because you just like glide on. Uh -huh. <laughs> so like for my parents who are, they're not very avid riders, I'm like, that is going to be such a nice ride. Yeah. <laughs> so nice you don't have to like bounce that. and post. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, so this is Kalen. He's also a walker. He's about 15. I like him. He's very sweet. I think I'd like to just kind of like see more options. Yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to think if we have more options because we have. Um... Oh, we can keep coming back. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you can always make another appointment too. Because I, like I, yeah, I do like honey. She's very, <laughs> she's just very sweet. What is she considered like? Passive peanut. Passive peanut. She said, Jenna and I and CJ are, are your adoption liaison. Just said, take both of them. <laughs> you want her? Yes, I do. Oh, Martha? Yeah. You want to add her? Well, Casey says to do it too so that they could both be together. Yeah. And <laughs> they'd have at least each other. Well, you can, you can add her. It's not too late. I'm not done filling out paperwork. I haven't had handed you the, the bag yet, so. Cause, so they can both be together, right? They're, they're kind of, I mean. <laughs> Is it a straight load or? It's a straight load, yeah. It, does it have a divider or no? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, then you'll be fine. Well, and, and even, even when we get there, I mean, they're, they, they probably would probably be together. together. They'll, sure. they'll figure each other out. They're both like um, fairly middle or whatever, so they probably won't fight too terribly bad. Like, I mean, Martha's like in the low end of the totem pole, so. But at least they would be. Okay. Definitely together. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, we'll have to go get you an adoption photo, but that's okay. We can figure it out. And her health sheet, which is everything that we've done since she's been here, including her weight checks.
We're here today because Margaret and I really wanted to have some horses to ride along with our other horses we have on the property. So this is our first start and these are two beautiful horses. We got Honey and we got Martha and we're taking them both home. So we have a sad update with Callie. We did just take her to the emergency vet they did decide that it was best to euthanize Callie. Um, signs of bacterial infection with the goopy eye, um, upper respiratory issues, and ultimately she was too weak. So they did decide that it was best for Callie to be put down. So we went on ahead and um, had her euthanized there. So um, it was sad, but the cat was also left on the side of the road. There's no telling how long it had been on the side of the road. It was so small that it needed to be bottle fed. We did try three different times to bottle feed the cat and it would not latch onto the bottle. Um, so ultimately, we do appreciate all of the surrenders that are dropped off here um, and doing the right thing. This one just, um, the, the neglect was too far gone for us to be able to save Callie. So this is Porthos. He came as an owner of Surrender with two other younger horses. The guy just had him as pasture pets pretty much and never touched him. They'd come up and they'd take treats from his hands and that's about the extent of their handling that they've had. He has come a long way since he came here. Um, he's still very fearful, but he's getting a lot better about letting me come up to him and put a halter on him. I believe he did have something traumatic happen because it does look like he's got beat up a lot. I mean, he's got scars all over him. He's got a really big scar underneath of his neck with a lot of scar tissue built up. But on the left side of his face, it looks like he's got a, a sinus that collapsed there. So he must have been hit pretty hard for that to happen. So I believe that there was one point where he had been started under saddle and somebody just had a really harsh bit and ripped that bit out of his mouth. When I do go to ride him, I probably won't ride him in a bit. I'll probably just have a halter on his face or a hackamore or something just so we don't go back to that traumatic experience. He seems to be really worried out of this eye, but he definitely looks like he's been beat up a lot in his life. So he's very fearful. This kind of stuff will kind of help him realize that the world isn't as scary as he thinks it is. We'll get a hand up here, kind of rub him a little bit. I won't just take this halter and go straight underneath him with it. I'll kind of hold it out here and wait for him to look at it and check it out. I'll pet him. Come up a little closer and I'll touch him with it. And there's neck. And then grab it over here. Now he really doesn't like this going over his nose. So it's something that I've been working on a lot with him. I'll just keep asking him to come over here. There you go. So if he makes a try for it, I'll take that away. Put some pressure. Good boy. And I might do that a couple times before I just tie this halter off. I'll pet him. Take it right back off. Pet him again. The same thing, just apply some pressure, wait for him to look in there, and then slide it up. And I'll do it one more time for good measure. Good job, buddy. That was better. He actually tipped his nose down into it that time, so I'll go ahead and tie this off. So now that I got him here, you can actually see on this side here, it almost looks collapsed. Someone was really trying to get you, huh? All right, let's get some sunscreen on you. So here we just got some EquiShield. Stuff works really great, it's super thick. He used to hate this too. He's definitely gotten better. I know, I'm touching your face. Get it all on your mustache there. Not so bad, is it? <laughs> <laughs> 